I'm from Peru. I was born here, but my parents are from Afghanistan. France and Congo. Pakistan. I'm from Honduras. We got Americans. We got the whole package. Spring soccer tryouts are a melting pot for the kids at Cecil D. Hilton High School in suburban Virginia. Language has nothing to do with it. Culture has nothing to do with it. It's just all out there having fun and being as one, and that's what we're doing here. We're becoming one. But in the classrooms here, it is a different story. While the racial divisions that were once a part of American schools have disappeared, Hilton High School in Prince William County is now on the front line of America's latest struggle over how to assimilate immigrants and their children. I'm glad I don't have to fix the immigration question, but I think that charitably, they're here, they're children, they need to be taught. As in many U.S. communities over the last 10 years, a housing boom and the construction jobs that came with it attracted a new wave of immigrants to the area, reigniting divisions between those who speak English and those who are just learning. My idea has always been to continue studying, always. And then I got my papers. I got them when I hadn't finished high school. But I had to come, and now, here I am. Amalia Raimundo came to the United States 18 months ago from Guatemala. Speaking no English, she was placed into the school's ESOL program, ESOL, English for Speakers of Other Languages, and totally separated from her American counterparts. Do you like in your country school, or you like here? Um, I like there more because because of the language. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here you have to learn English. I know. That's what it is opportunity. So you have on this paper the three forms of imperialism. The program's director has one goal to ensure all ESOL students pass the state exams required for graduation. For instance, I was teaching yesterday about imperialism. The word is long, it has ism on the end, that always throws them. All the vocabulary uh, it needs to be explained because the vocabulary in world history is nothing like the vocabulary in the cafeteria. Despite success, the program has turned into a modern form of school segregation. Our ESOL scores, uh, specifically for writing, 100% passing. And of the 100%, um, we had eight students score advanced. So what's happening is successful academically. The question that we have to ask is, is that effective when you're trying to assimilate students together? I'm going to say it in Spanish because I think I can express myself better. The ESOL program, for those of us who come and don't know English, really helps us a lot. It has a lot of advantages. The teachers try to explain everything as much as possible, as much as they can. But it also has disadvantages because I only have a few classes that aren't ESOL classes and maybe these would help me a little more in practicing the little bit of English that I'm learning. Six of Amalia's seven academic classes are filled entirely with students whose first language is not English. Most are Hispanic. For each of those classes, she has an additional review class, which leaves her with only art, the one elective where she can be with American classmates. As ESOL students become more fluent in English, they take fewer backup classes and mix more with mainstream students. but mixing is at the mercy of typical high school behavior. From mostly separate classrooms, ESOL students stick together in the cafeteria and in after-school clubs where they find both camaraderie and shelter. Sometimes they know that you come from different places, they, they, they treat you different. They think because you're Latin, Latin they think that we're going to do bad stuff. Why I came here just because I'm Chinese, some people will be mocking, pretending that I was speaking Chinese, which made me mad. And some people was like, Chinese are smart, so you're supposed to get an A in this subject. I'm not trying to separate. I'm trying to be there as a net. This is the land of opportunity, it still is. And education is everything. Without education, you're going to be relegated to a certain kind of job and a certain kind of income. Education is your key. Education is the great equalizer.
Amalia has straight A's and is determined to graduate. In Guatemala, she had hoped to become a doctor, but in Virginia, she's been so discouraged by the language barrier that at times she's considered dropping out to clean houses with her mother. My mother is insisting that I come, that I come. I've always been a dreamer. I've always wanted to do the best possible and be someone someday. And so, if I abandon my education here, I'm not ever going to be somebody. Hilton High School's ESOL program is too new for long-term data. Whether it's helping students like Amalia earn a high school diploma at the risk of sidelining them in society remains to be seen.